during the 16 Days of Action 2022 campaign. Girls are Girls on Fire and Tech Shack Tactical TV interview ordinary but outstanding women. Hashtag I am every woman. In our interviews, we honor outstanding businesswomen who have made a difference in their specific sphere of society to ladies who have overcome horrific gender-based violence incidences. We, we believe in action. action, not activism. Why are women continually cast as helpless victims? Bystanders to their own fate, presuming that victimhood is a fait accompli. We are not simply dear in the headlights of gender-based violence. We can and will stand up for ourselves. We are not second-class citizens who need special days and men standing up for us. We, we say, say no, no more. Activism does not change the minds of predators. Predators will always be predators, waiting in the dark to claim their victims. Standing on street corners with placards saying that we are against gender-based violence has and never alone make a difference. Take, Take action, action now. now not to be a victim and, and be a, be a strong, strong woman. woman. Do, Do not put your trust in anybody else except yourself. Take the example from the strong woman in these interviews and, and be, be a, a warrior. warrior. Hashtag victim no longer. The Knit Oxley here for Tack Shack Tactical TV and Gosa Girls on Fire for our 16 days of action. We're speaking to Gloria Masters, an amazing lady. She's in New Zealand. Welcome, uh, Gloria. Hello. Thank you. Hi. I'm going to play a little bit about our numbers uh, this morning. Um, this is part of the UN, United Nations 16 Days of Activism for No Violence Against Women and Children that was started in 1991. When I looked at some of your uh, reviews, uh, your, your previous interviews, you said you had 16 years of abuse. We looked at 1991 to 2022, it's uh, 31 years. Uh, you also said you buried it until you were 32 years of age. So we, uh, it's twice times 16, if you think about it. Um, and we believe, so there's a lot of, for me, numerical numbers that make sense right now. And uh, we're talking about 16 days of action. We've changed it right from the start when we started. We said action rather than activism. People are not going to change because you say to them, please don't abuse me or the children, me as a as a victim. The people that's perpetrators will always be perpetrators. So you as a person will have to take action. So let's start with you telling us about your story and how did it bring you to this point? I know it's in in a nutshell, but how did it bring you to a point the point that you are now? Thank you, Lynette. Yeah, okay. So I love the number 16, so thank you. It's my favourite number. And the reason it's my favourite number is because 16 was the age when the abuse stopped. The day I turned 16, I no longer had to see my father again, so I never willingly did. Um, I was born into a family where I was sold into sex trafficking. I'm not saying I was born to do that, but I am saying from the time I was very small, I was trained and conditioned by my father, his mother, and one of his sisters to be a child sex slave. Now, what I know that's almost unimaginable, Lynette, yes. for your for people to hear. The reality is the reason I believe this had been going on for generations within the family is because it was so matter of fact and my grandmother was being paid a commission to teach me the art of seduction as a small child. It's unimaginable for me. Um, and it makes me very angry. So, um... How did it get to you as a person? So it went on for 16 years. Uh, how did you get out? And uh, were you involved? Uh, and was your mom involved or just the grandparent and your dad? My grandparent, my auntie, his whole extended family abused me as well. But they made a lot of money out of me because I wasn't just abused by them. I was leased to gangs. I was trafficked out of a nightclub in our red light district in Auckland. 
and I was part of a, a Freemason group every month they would meet and so there was satanic ritual abuse. I also featured in hundreds of well over a hundred movies um, as a sex slave. So these were the days, Lynette, when they had the big projector wheels, the reels. So you had the big square frame they were in and I could hear it whirring and see it moving. So there's a lot to my story. The, the real story, in my opinion, though, is the power to overcome. And I found a light and I followed that light from inside me and I just trusted that and that's partly how I became uh, the person I am today. Where did realization start uh, in your mind as a child? Can you remember when it started and you say, you thought this is not okay, this is not the norm, um, it shouldn't be happening to me? I think there were a few things. One was if I went to other people's homes, the children were loved. The children were um, highlighted, you know, and enjoyed. And it struck me as really odd because I was always just a nuisance or in the way unless my father could use me sexually and make money out of me sexually or my mother um, could get me to do something for her. So she was a narcissist and they never actually saw me, they never saw the beautiful child. They never saw that, they never valued that and shame for them and shame on them. Absolutely. What happened at the age of 16 that was so important to you? Why did you get uh, out? Because you're still yes. a child. At 16, you're still a child. Well, it was my parents had separated. And so I was told I had to keep seeing my father and visiting every second weekend until I turned 16. And the day I turned 16, Lynette, I never saw him willingly ever again. If I saw him after that time, it was a family wedding or funeral and I didn't speak to him, so. Did you ever go to the police with your story? Um, because in, in my 30s. And did something come of it? Look, in, in back then, no, but they were at pains to point out that although they could not get a conviction. It was only because the burden of proof was not met. They were at pains to point out, it's not that they didn't believe me, it's just that there was one of me against many others. I had a chat to a lady earlier this week and she basically said, if it's one person, you can't actually get that burden of proof out there. If it's more than one person, that's when it actually starts becoming a, a it makes a difference in terms of the law. And that's yeah. obviously the problem that you have. Because I do, you know, we're sitting in South Africa, um, our police is not good. Um, they've uh, actually, when ladies go and report rape, they sometimes rape by the police themselves. So we're sitting in a very dangerous, not a very nice country in terms of uh, law. So yeah, it's um, it's interesting for me. You always think it's worse in your country, but sometimes it's the same all over the world um, in terms of abuse because it's very difficult for you to prove that this, this has happened to you. Well, and I think too, the burden of proof is always on the person, the victim or the survivor, if you like. And so what happens is you've got a traumatized person coming forward they're already traumatized. They then bring their case to the police and depending on the police, um, because there's wonderful police as well, uh, they will do their best to treat it with respect. But if they don't, we still have very, very low 
conviction rates here, um, as I'm sure you do in South Africa. Um, and so unfortunately, our child sexual abuse statistics lead the world. Um, we, by the time a girl turns 16 in our country, in our country, one in three girls will have been sexually abused. One in three. One is, in three. That is, that's just a horrific statistic. Um, yeah, I, I actually will ask one of my my friends that's in the that used to do was in the police as well. What our statistics is, I'm not 100 percent sure what the South African statistics is, but I also don't think it's probably much better than that. Or it might be worse. And remember, and remember, this goes largely unreported. Now, we're not even talking about the poor boys uh, that this no. happens to as well, but there's huge numbers there as well. And I guess, you know, something needs to happen. So I'm glad you're doing a podcast like this. There's some very truly evil people out there. And the more I speak to people, the more I realise um, yes. There's really evil people out there, and I've always been of the opinion that we've talked about before. It's uh, you're never going to change those people. The only way is to actually stop them um, um, from the other side. If you understand what I'm trying to say, um, you are you started an organisation calling "Handing the Shame Back." Tell me what what that means. Oh, thank you. Um, so there's two parts to that. So Handing the Shame Back is the first YouTube channel in the world da -da, that is devoted solely to adult survivors of child sexual abuse. And on that channel, I interview survivors. I also provide content and resource for survivors in the form of blogs or um survivor tips and techniques to help support each other uh, and the other thing i do are things like this where i get interviewed and um, talk about specific aspects of the trauma in a way that helps to provide some resource or uh, support for fellow survivors so i'm very proud of that that's a youtube channel we'll link uh, it into this as well Yes, we'll perfect. And the, you. Thank you. And the other thing is I've started a charity this year called Handing the Shame Back Foundation. And again, that is a safe place for survivors and we prov provide resource and support and just some content uh, that that helps um, yeah, helps people shift through and your, your term Lynette, take some action so they're not feeling quite so stuck and trapped and lost. And the big one is feeling alone. So all those beautiful survivors out there watching your show, you're not alone. There's many of us and uh, we stand with you. Mm. That's an absolutely fantastic message. I uh, just want to go back to, again, 2 times 16, 32. That is basically when you said, did you have your first child then or... What, why was you also talked about 32 and that's when as an adult you realized you wanted to do something yeah so no I, I had my I, I had two children by the time I was 32 but 32 was the age when the memories started flooding so what our minds do when we suffer horrendous trauma uh, is our, our minds tend to shut down and block and they do that so that we can safely heal from the trauma without being um, having it right in our faces. And people say, well, I don't understand. So I'll put it this way. It's like having a bad car accident. You're not going to remember the accident until your body has healed enough and your mind feels safe enough to face it. Then, then you'll remember it. The same thing with this type of trauma. We block it, we dissociate from it, and when our mind is ready, it then comes back. Man, did mine come back. <laughs> I I had 16 it years you of in it. The, and it slapped you in the face. It punched me. It was like a tsunami. Um, it, was a, it was a very hard time uh, in my life. Yeah. How did you get through it, um, Gloria? 
Uh, being tenacious, working through it. How did you get through it? Yeah, thank you. Good question. I I really struggled. Um, I think it was my children that saved me. Uh, you can't go through that type of trauma, all the all the things I've outlined that I experienced, and be healthy and sane and feel good about who you are. But because I was a mother, I was determined my children were going to have the best possible life I could give them. So that that helped me. That helped me act. That helped me find the motivation and the courage actually to face what I needed to so I could overcome. That's, that's yeah. very wise words. You also wrote a book on angels' wings. Uh, is that the only book you wrote, or is there other uh, books that uh, some of my viewers can look out for? So there's a couple of books. One, my first one was on angels' wings, my flight from trauma to grace. I've got them both here, but the that was my memoir. That took a few. That took several years to write that book. It was very painful, but it was also cathartic in a way because it was want quite. To ask you. Yeah, yeah, it was putting quite Putting it in words, yeah, putting it in words sometimes just bring it out and open and it, hopefully that's part of the healing process. Yes, and you make sense of things too when it's in writing, I think. Yeah. But the, the that was my first book on Angel's Wings and that got published last year in a, April. Um, the memoir, it's pretty shock. It's a pretty shocking read, Lynette, but it's truth. So I don't know how to sugarcoat that. It's just truth. Um, but the second book, my flight path, or sorry, flight path to healing, yeah. a guide for child sexual abuse survivors. So that's my uh, a guide I've written for survivors to help heal. I will definitely go and uh, read your book and hopefully we can have a follow-up uh, interview specifically about the book. Uh, I do quite a lot of book reviews especially and there's another lady that I interviewed a little bit earlier this um, this week which I've also, I think uh, she had something also traumatic experiences so I will definitely make time in the next couple of months to actually go, come, come back to you about the book as well if you don't mind. Awesome, thank you. Lastly, I would like to ask you if you have a message for women or rape survivors or child sexual abuse survivors, what will it be? Trust yourself. Because when we start to bring our truth to the light, people don't want to hear it. So trust yourself, trust your instinct. You don't make this stuff up. This happened. Find your courage and trust yourself to believe what you are feeling and seeing and experiencing. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Gloria. Hope you have a good evening. Uh, I'll have a good day. And um, we'll chat again. Um, it was amazing to chat to you. And thank you for sharing your, uh, your thoughts. Oh, thanks, Lynette. That's awesome. Have a good day. I'm a girl on fire, I'm not a victim, I'm a girl on fire, I'll stand my ground, girl on fire, I've made a choice, I stand proud, I'm a girl on fire, I'm a mother, a daughter, a sister, a friend, I'm every woman. I have taken up arms and I choose to defend all that I hold dear. Independent and strong, you will not keep me down, you can't break me. I'm a girl on fire, I'm not a victim, I'm a girl on fire, I'll stand my ground. Girl on fire, I've made a choice, I stand proud. Countless hours on the range, I am responsibly armed, I am your equal. I've empowered myself, I have practiced and trained, fear won't control me. With my
my sisters in arms We will make ourselves heard We'll stand together I'm a girl, I'm a girl 